Today I will be demonstrating how to make a mould. What's really, really important is that you weigh out your rubber. You must shake your catalyst. The worst thing with rubber is that it's a heavy vapour and although you can smell the catalyst, you can't actually smell the rubber. Always wear, wear a mask, wear a breather mask, wear a good mask. I cannot emphasise enough that you must have a really good stirred in mix. You can see that this stuff, it looks fairly thick and viscous at the moment, but by the time it's run down your sculpture, it goes very, very thin. And you do the most difficult bit first. And that means that you go inside Try and do this so you can all see, push through and then it will run, it will run out the other side. So you come in from the other side and work your brush up. So this is one of the reasons that you work with leather hard clay. If your clay was soft and wet even a fine brush like this can damage your surface. Because it has no thixotropic additive, which is the thickening agent in it, essentially all of this wants to end up down here. You don't worry about that. So the first and the second coat, you have to be really careful and make sure that you're popping all the bubbles, the holes, everything has been filled. At this stage, you can leave it for 24 hours, put the second coat on, then you have um, an atmospheric seal. You know, it isn't going to react, it isn't going to dry out, it is in stasis until you want to come back to it. And I'm now going to add a thickening agent and that's a thick tropic additive. New is strong, old is deteriorating and is not as strong. It's okay to use for your second coat because um, it doesn't go as thick as this one does. Almost thick enough, but what it's doing is it's still thin enough that it takes the detail the aim of the second coat is to a back up your first layer, make it a bit thicker, but it's also you're now going to be concentrating on losing the appearance of the clay underneath. At the end of your second coat, you want to see no clay. How do I know? <laughs> How much I've put on. I add a coloured pigment to my mix. And it's um, a silicon pigment. You cannot use a water-based product or a powder of any description. But as you can see, it really will hang on the knife. That's how it needs to be because this builds up your rubber to a quarter of an inch thick all over. You do not spread it too thin. So I am checking that I'm going up the shape. I've forced it in. I heard an air bubble then, so yeah, just as well I've gone back over it again. Forcing it in, forcing it in, not leaving holes. This will be covered completely three layers of rubber over it, quarter of an inch thick all over. This has had three coats of rubber all over it. I'm hoping that I can actually get this out as a one piece. So that's a one piece rubber and a two piece jacket. I will make sure that I have smoothed the surface down completely so that when I put the jacket on it, I know that it will lift off. Okay, 
so it goes from one end to the other, quarter of an inch thick. The old photographs had a surface on them and that surface is what separates these two halves. This side actually doesn't. So the next thing you always make sure is that all your cards face photograph shiny bit outwards. So following the line of my rubber, I just carry on working round and making sure again that the shiny side is always out. Okay, so by putting these shims in, you're actually dictating the height of your jacket. It will be this high. Um, it needs to be that height because the flanges that you're going to put on this will uh, take up half of that depth. Now, you can, at this point, wait for this to set, but you've got things like that running. And here, if you're very careful, you can just start to pull that up. And run this smoothly in. You're not bringing it up the sides of the shim. You're not using it to make a flange. You're just joining your shims into the body of your sculpture because they are your separator. Flanges. These are the things that stick up and are part of your mould and help hold your rubber section into the jacket. A Stanley knife cut the rubber away. That is your base flange. This stuff comes off cut half an inch thick flange. The bit at the bottom is smoother than the bit on the top. So the bit that's on the bottom, smooth, goes into your rubber. Okay, smooth side down, press in like that and then hold it and squish it into position so that the rubber squeezes out on that side. Then you know that you've got a layer of rubber underneath on your flat shims, perfectly sealed. I can now smooth back across there and make the flange become one with the rest of the body. So you're smoothing one into the other. So it fits, fits nice and smoothly. The flange hits the shim. You're checking that there are no holes going down because when you paint your resin on, the resin runs vertically down into those holes and tears the rubber when you take the jacket off. That is it. You've now got shims throughout the form. You've got flanges on both sides. What you go along, trim down so that your edge is nice and smooth. 